It's been a while since I updated you all on Dying Light 2, so I thought I'd check up on one of my favorite games. Wait a minute, Dying Light points? Oh my Velador, it's worse than I thought. The game has microtransactions. My eye! After feeling like Captain America waking up from the ice after 70 years, I thought I'd update all of us on the game and also discuss its future. Hey hey hey, welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and today we're going to discuss if Dying Light 2 is dying. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. Dying Light 1 was one of the best games I've ever played with story, parkour, variations of zombies, and combat. You are really testing my patience! When Dying Light 2 was launched, it did not have the same vibe as the first game, yet I still enjoyed it due to feeling superhuman. A large time frame has passed since then, and Techland has been releasing changes, updates, hotfixes, and limited time events. Dying Light points were introduced not long ago, and people were very unhappy about it. If people received 500 Dying Light points and the lowest bundle they could buy was 550, of course us pilgrims would be upset. I've heard that they recently improved the points with bundles placed at 100 points, they're also working on finding a way for players to purchase items separately from the bundles. So, despite the significant setback, they do still try to listen to their community, which is rare for game companies. In terms of updates, they released a third community update in the beginning of November, where there were new enemy variants, replayable GRE anomalies, humane virals, more finishers, new weapon rarities, knives, instant healing consumables, better enemy drops, weather improvements, as well as new features like a weapon repair system or the ability to dismantle weapon mods. This update is actually one of the better updates for Dying Light 2. My only issue from these updates and changes is that they should have been in the game since launch. I do appreciate them making gradual improvements in the updates, but the nature of these updates are somewhat questionable. For example, they would fix very problematic glitches, but they would also try and fix what's not broken. A controversial hotfix appeared a week after Community Update 3. People were ecstatic with farming legend level XP by repeating GRE anomalies, which dropped pilgrim chests with rare weapons. Yet, Techland took an approach to nerf them. Just like they did with the grappling hook, Koric charm, broomstick, and the doom gun. Huh? They've decreased the amount of legend points one gets from GRE anomalies. 750 on easy, 1000 on normal, and 2000 legend points on hard difficulty. From what I recall, players would get 2250 legend points, but they'll get 750 now. This is going to give players less of an incentive to replay these anomalies. Just let us become OP. No. They also nerfed the boosters and some high-level outfits, which makes taking a toughness booster not as effective. In terms of events, Techland introduced a lot of events in Dying Light 2. At times, they were very fun, like the event where we could launch zombies into space. But as someone who played the game since launch, they felt a bit lackluster at times, like not much thought was put into them. The crossover event with For Honor was an amazing collaboration, but it felt rushed and got boring quickly. I remember playing this game a long time ago, so I do remember some characters. You will face these warriors with unique animations and skill sets in the form of a samurai, knight, or berserker. If you eradicate one of them, you get 5 rage boosters. If you eradicate 30, you get a berserker outfit and paraglider. And then there's the global goal to defeat 5 million guards for a warlord's shield charm. This charm has a perk that stops you from losing any stamina for the next 10 seconds after a successful execution. As much as the weapons and fights are cool, I feel like many people will get tired of this event easily. They fought valiantly, but their blades, axes, and katanas were no match for him. 
fighting the warriors over and over again. The warriors do not drop anything but a few coins for loot, and once bounties are completed, there's no reason to keep fighting them. If the warriors dropped rare loot, or if this event had side quests with dialogue and cutscenes, maybe people would enjoy this event more until December 5th. There was wasted potential for this event, because they could have used the arena from the Bloody Ties DLC to fight each character like in For Honor. Plus, the developers would not have to put much more work in by reusing Carnage Hall. Or they could have created a new mission in Dying Light 2, where medieval samurai and viking factions invade Villador and Aiden stops the war. Every day you fight for survival, but today you fight for glory. Anyone can be a warrior. What makes you different is the spirit of a champion. In terms of dying light points, they will cost you 500, which is not bad considering you won't be left with extra dying light points. But you know, sometimes I do wish for actual content rather than paid bundles for different events. Don't get me wrong, the events probably required Techland to put in a lot of work, but there's not much replayability to them to get us to play the game non-stop. Yet, I do hope Techland continues to improve the core game experience, perhaps even add more locations, activities, challenges, quests, or maybe cross-save and cross-gen. From what I'm seeing, Dying Light 2 has gotten a lot better since launch. However, the game will need more time to bring all the players back. Maybe next year, we will get more good content after the seasonal events and new updates. There may be two more community updates in the next few months from the roadmap including new missions, tower raid, the addition of guns, nightmare difficulty, and the return of Tolga and Fatim. Honestly, I'm pretty excited for what's to come, especially seeing these two return to Dying Light 2. So, is Dying Light 2 actually dying? My answer is no. Despite the setbacks, Techland does pour their heart and soul into this game. I don't know if it's just me, but perhaps because we played the whole game so long ago, there's not really much of a pull factor to bring us a lot of excitement. But seeing their upcoming content and the potential for DLC 2 to come out, I think we can have hope for this game. I think I'll wait till DLC 2 comes out, however, I may visit Villador from time to time to see Tolga and Fatim, try out tower raids, and use the guns added to the game. So what do you think of Dying Light 2's future? Is it dying, or is there a light at the end of the tunnel for it? But um, tch. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What were your thoughts on the For Honor crossover event? What do you want to see more in Dying Light 2? I know Techland listens to their community, so perhaps they may see your suggestions and add it to the game. Thank you for watching, and that's all.